Over the last seven years, this channel has gone through a lot of changes. And aside from the content itself and the art, themes and activities, one of the things that has changed very dramatically that really hasn't been talked about directly very much is how the videos are filmed and the resulting quality of those videos. Now, when I first started on this channel, the video production equipment I used consisted of an old computer to do screen recordings with and a Logitech C300 webcam. Over the years, I slowly upgraded my production equipment equipment and it started off with a very simple upgrade, a secondhand Canon 500D I got off of eBay for I think about 250 bucks but back then that was a huge change from just like a, a little crappy webcam to a, a less crappy secondhand DSLR camera. So this video is not about talking down simple or affordable or starter production setups but I guess the point I wanted to get to in this video is talking about amping up the quality and why that can be really fun and how you can do that without completely completely killing your wallet. But that was the beginning of what I will admit is now frankly an addiction to upgrading my equipment and amping up the quality of the videos and the visual presentation of the videos on this channel. A major point at which I was really able to satiate that addiction was two years ago when we successfully crowdfunded to upgrade my studio and because we exceeded that goal so much I was able to buy some really cool production equipment including my first really serious video camera. This is the Lumix GH5 which I've used religiously for the last two years. It's only in the last few months that a very new and very exciting shift has changed in the production equipment that we're working with. You'll note I'm not currently filming with the GH5. So earlier this year, in about February, I was sent a bunch of equipment from the folks over at Black Magic, who had been trying to get a hold of for some time to try out their camera equipment, and I have to say my mind is pretty much blown. Now do keep in mind this is not sponsored or a paid product promotional review or anything, but because these are very serious production quality cinema and studio camera equipments and monitors, combining that with the fact that they're actually the most affordable out there, it really is worth bringing to your attention. Specifically, those of you who are looking to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to visual fidelity, color grading, and even post-production, which we'll get to later in this video. This is the new gear I wanna talk about in today's video. Look at it! Look at it, this is serious production equipment. The reason I'm making a video is because it doesn't cost the same as serious production equipment, like the RED cameras and the RE cameras that cost upwards of 20 to 30 thousand dollars. That's like a baseline cost. So in this video, I'm going to smash through four pieces of hardware and one piece of software I think you will find very interesting. Starting off with the Blackmagic Design Micro Studio Camera 4K. Then we're going to move on to some monitors, the Blackmagic 5-inch Video Assist and the 7-inch 4K Video Assist. Then we're going to dive into the Pocket Cinema 4K, which I'm filming with now. And last but not least, we're going to briefly touch on DaVinci Resolve, also a Blackmagic product and one that comes for free with a, a large number of the Blackmagic products that I've previously mentioned. So more on that later, but let's start off with the equipment. This is the Blackmagic Micro Studio camera. This is the body of the camera, and as you can see, it has no monitor, it has no lens, it just it's just this body of a camera. But it takes micro four thirds lenses, so when you put on a lens, all of a sudden, it's starting to feel a little beefier. And the point is you take this body and you expand on it in any way you need. Now there are a couple of things about this. It actually doesn't record footage on itself, it sort of projects it. So this is ideal for people who, because it's a micro studio camera, might be doing some recording on the computer. You can use the HDMI out and go to a capture card, or you can capture on a video monitor, which we'll be covering later in this video. So I actually have two micro studio Studio cameras that I use all the time. One I use as a front on camera that I mount to my desk and the other I have mounted <coughs> to a crane. So when I mount it to the front of my desk, it's simply just this and the lens and then I lead it to a capture card or a monitor and that's all I need. Whereas on the crane, I have it mounted with a monitor, a very zoomy, zoomy lens and I have a light mounted to the top of the camera which helps diffuse shadows when I'm drawing. So this is actually a replacement to what was previously this on a boom arm. So it's a modular setup and that's the point of this camera. It's a modular camera and it's adaptable in a bunch of different ways. Now I did mention this thing doesn't actually record. It doesn't have the capacity to have a capture card and that is where the video assists come in. So mounted to the crane, I have the video assist five inch which can film at 1080p and then if you want a higher resolution and a larger screen, the video assist seven inch can film at 4K. Now that sounded weird to me when I first learned about this equipment that this thing can film, but it has capacity for a 
a couple of SD cards and it has a really fantastic playback experience and really great settings. The best thing I've started to realize about the Blackmagic ecosystem are the menus. There's also the worst thing about the GH5. Like if I want to change to a variable frame rate to film some slow motion, it's such a convoluted process. Whereas the video assist monitors and the Pocket Cinema 4K, which we'll get to in a moment, have a simple touchscreen setup, which is really straightforward. Everything is accessible within subcategories on the main menu that you can just tap. And then with an average two to three taps at the most, you can get right to the setting you want to get to or change. And then some of the more complicated stuff is really easy to turn into a preset or something you can access quickly. Now, ever since starting to use video monitors like these, it's completely revolutionized the way I approach and think about and can film content. The reference image of what I need and the ability to affect or start or stop the recordings, change the settings, everything is right there on a beautiful touch screen. It's just, it's awesome, it's great. Now I wanna go through the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera. That is a mouthful. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema, but, Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Wow. Okay, its standout feature is not its name. We got that out of the way, but what it can do is a lot of the stuff that the GH5 actually cannot do, specifically working in a whole bunch of cinematic settings. One of the major ones that has really got a lot of people talking is the fact that it can film 4K in RAW. Another thing that is amazing about the camera is the touch screen. It's really refreshing in a day and age where most cameras look like this. They have a body of about this size and they have a screen of about this size. But a lot of the buttons and settings are around and about the camera. And then the menus, as I explained previously, are a pain in the ass. This is something, as I've said, that the Pocket Cinema 4K does incredibly well as far as the menu navigation goes, but on the camera itself, the fact that it is all there on such a big, beautiful screen, and that screen is always in front of you when you're filming, it's really good. So anyways, along with its very generous five inch touchscreen and a really friendly menu layout, you can film in 4K up to 60 frames a second and in RAW or in ProRes. And there's a bunch of sub settings for those as well. I feel like a lot of these things I keep mentioning are, are like big deals that I've learned over the course of the seven years that I've run the channel. Oh, that's a big deal. Oh, that's a big deal. One of which is the fact that it can run phantom power. So you can use phantom powered boom mics or condenser microphones plug straight into the mini X LR port with an adapter into the Pocket Cinema 4K camera. I mean, it does have a normal mic input that you can, you know, use and a headphone input or whatever, but the fact that you can use an XLR microphone with phantom power, for those of you who are more audiophiles or have specifically higher end audio setups, it's really worth noting that because it's really useful. And a couple of other things worth noting is that it features a full size HDMI port, which you can use to project out to a video monitor or a TV or a capture card. And it has USB-C input Input which you can use to transfer files and do all that, but also record footage onto a supported SSD. This is a big deal because the files on these cameras can build up and be pretty big, but you can attach a 500 gigabyte or a terabyte SSD to your camera and get a lot further with the files that you record. So I hope you found some of that a little bit interesting. Those of you who are interested in getting some of the stuff, I'll give you some of my really blunt pros and cons from my experience in the last four or five months using the cameras and the equipment. Starting off with the micro studio cameras, these things are awesome, but their menu navigation sucks. Now, fortunately for me, this isn't much of an issue because the cameras are rarely needing to have settings changed because the lighting and the environment in here is really controllable and often the same. Battery life is also crap, but I have them plugged into power all the time. It's a micro studio camera. I use them in a studio setup. Everything is plugged in here. So battery life is not an issue for me at all. Then on to the video assist and I don't have much to say as far as any negatives working with these things aside from in my first day using them I recorded a video and something happened I don't know if I formatted the card incorrectly or something but I lost the footage of the front camera that I was filming and since then I've been paranoid and I do a test recording every time I record on them I have never had any failures or issues and I've recorded dozens of videos since then with you know many cards being filled now I just do a little two second recording, check back, see if we're okay and just film from there. But other than that, which I don't even know how to quantify it as part of the experience or even if it's worth mentioning, these things are really, really robust and very cool. And like I said, the experience of using a monitor, setting it up exactly where I need it to be. Let's say I'm filming in a really awkward position. I can have a, a monitor just out of view 
but the camera itself far off somewhere else or film on this separate to any other, like it's just really cool. So now onto the Pocket Cinema 4K, which of everything that I've covered so far is probably the piece of equipment most relevant to most of you who have gotten this far in the video. Now there are some cons to this camera which are not ideal. It has abysmal battery life. It lasts maybe 20 to 25 minutes on the default batteries that come with the camera, but it comes with a plug. And that's all I personally need. Sometimes we'll untether it and get a bit of B roll for 15 minutes doing something else. But 95% of the time I have this thing set up in a position or held in hand and plugged in to a PowerPoint and just running for hours. Another thing that is really not ideal is that it doesn't have any in-body stabilization. So if you're using this thing as a run and gun camera, you're gonna get a lot of shakes if you're shaking a lot. Now, if I wanna get the picture quality of the Black Magic, but wanna do a little bit of movement, I will use use a lens with in-lens stabilization and that actually does counteract a lot of the problem. But if you want a vlog camera or if you have any adventure content, maybe this isn't the camera for you, especially considering it doesn't have a flip screen. And that is another major bummer for people who want to use it for, I guess, more activity-based things or film themselves. You cannot selfie vlog with the Pocket Cinema 4K. But beyond selfie vlogging, also if you're filming at awkward angles, it's unfortunate that the screen is stuck in one position and you can't anchor it or rotate it. It is just facing the way it's facing. Now, like I said, for me, that's a non-issue because I either have someone holding and handling the camera or if I need a reference, I can hook it up to a monitor. But that is well worth considering and taking into account if you're considering getting this camera. Another bummer is the camera doesn't have continual autofocus, which means that if I do this, uh, there's no autofocus for it to just automatically adjust. There is a touch to focus or you can manual focus, which isn't an issue for me because I do art activities. So it's usually focused on what I'm doing or sometimes I have someone holding the camera and they can move around and they will focus as they need to focus. The pros are seriously pro, especially considering how pro the camera is. And the first massive one is the price. It averages at 1300 US dollars. It's also worth factoring into your decision that it comes with a free copy of DaVinci Resolve, the pro version. The other massive pro that no other camera anywhere near the price point of the Pocket Cinema 4K can even attempt to offer is the fact that it shoots 4K RAW, or I mean, any other resolution in RAW, but 4K at 60 frames a second in RAW on an affordable camera is just, unheard of. When you capture something in RAW, you're going to have more information in the lights and in the darks that you would lose if it's just a little overexposed or a little low light. You're gonna get a really nice mix of being able to push both ends to get something really great. Now, just for context, what you're looking at right now is footage from both my GH5 and my Pocket Cinema 4K camera. The Pocket Cinema 4K, of course, is shooting in RAW. And when I push the color settings to an extreme, you can see that the information that the RAW has to work with, especially the more extreme that I push it, the more intact and high quality the RAW footage can actually stay. So those are the major pros and they are indeed major pros. Now, there is one last thing I wanted to cover and that is DaVinci Resolve. Like I said, you get DaVinci Resolve Pro for free when you get some of this equipment. A lot of people I know have been switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve and I really want to. I can't yet because I am nailed and pinned like a vice into Adobe Premiere Pro because of our production workflow and pace. I have no time to stop or breathe to think about learning something new to move my entire production process to. However, I am tearing my hair out more and more every day day with the stupid crap I have to deal with in Adobe Premiere Pro. Just today, it took me 20 minutes to open a project. This doesn't always happen, but it happens. And it crashed on me mid-edit twice. And the biggest difference between Premiere Pro and Resolve that I've heard, and this is from online reviews, but also people I know who have switched to Resolve, is the stability of the program. The stability that I've heard this program comes with and the fact that it is so high production quality when it comes to color grading, editing and rendering, and it's its speed and workflow and apparently the scrub rate and all of that stuff is just outstanding. Now, I can't talk about any of that from experience, but I want to eventually, and I have plans to 
at some point learn and adapt and try switching my entire production workflow which is more complicated than it sounds because it involves several people and a very tight timeline that is something i really want to look into and try and do and i will tell you about my experience once i've done that if it's worth doing or not there's even a free version of resolve that you can download now and get started and learn and, and use it and then the pro features are actually still quite affordable and you don't have to pay that stupid subscription fee that adobe makes you pay for the creative cloud that gets more expensive every year. <laughs> Anyways, this video, as you know, is not an art video, but it's an art and creativity channel. And one of the ways that I have found myself being really creatively satisfied in the last seven years of creating content on this channel is the content creation process, which is why I wanted to make a video about the production equipment and the processes I'm going through and the changes I'm making because it's so satisfying and fun to do. And I just wanted to share some of that with you guys, hoping it will be helpful to some of you, interesting to a lot of you, and at the very least, something to look back on five years from now and say, hey, that's the way I did things then and that's how I do things now. It's really fun to look back and think, hey, I ran my channel for years using this thing. And I'm really looking forward to the years to come using the Blackmagic equipment because so far they've really proven their worth and I just wanted to share that with you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it or found it valuable or interesting in some way. All of the details to places you can find out in more depth about this equipment and all that stuff is down below. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, I'll see you later.